called one of California's true historic treasures by the Smithsonian Institution. The Homestead Museum provides a unique way to look at Southern California's history from the 1840s, when this land was still part of Mexico, through the 1920s, when Los Angeles came to be known worldwide as a major metropolitan city. Through all of its programs, the museum strives to better understand the past and people's ability to shape history. The six-acre site features the Workman House, an 1870s country home, constructed around an 1840s adobe built by William and Nicolasa Workman. La Casa Nueva, a 1920 Spanish colonial revival mansion noted for its architectural crafts, built by the Workman's grandson, Walter Temple, and his family. And El Campo Santo, one of the region's oldest private cemeteries. Few people expect to find a museum like this located in the city of industry, but everything you see at the homestead is in its original location. History is made personal at the homestead by using the Workman and Temple families as a case study to see how people responded and reacted to the numerous changes that took place in the region between the 1840s and 1920s. What we're able to do at the homestead is, over the period of 1840s and 1920s, we look at three decades, the 1840s, the 1870s, and the 1920s. And one area we can show change is the population, the type of people who are living here. So in the 1840s, it was mostly Indians, Mexicans, uh, native Spanish speakers of the Californios. By the 1920s, a very diverse population from all over the world. The type of work people did also changed dramatically, so cattle ranching was the mainstay of the economy. Later on it was agriculture. And by the 1920s you had the film industry and tourism and oil. And for the families we also were able to show how they were part of these changes that were going on, whether it was their cattle ranching or their banking in the 1870s or in the 1920s starting Temple City. Our story begins in 1841 when California was still part of Mexico. Using the old Spanish trail, William Workman and his family business partner and friend John Rowland and a group of settlers came to Los Angeles from Taos, New Mexico. In an area east of Los Angeles on land formerly owned by the San Gabriel Mission, they acquired Rancho La Puente. The rancho expanded within a few years to over 48,000 acres. There, they raised cattle for their hides or leather and tallow or fat. These were at the time valuable trade goods. Shortly after their arrival, the Workmans built a simple three-room adobe, similar in style to this drawing. It was remodeled into a country home in the late 1860s, adding a second floor and numerous decorative details. Believed to have been designed by early Los Angeles architect Ezra Kaiser, the remodeling of the house transformed it from a simple Mexican-era adobe into a modern American house. What makes the house so unique is that the original three-room adobe is still part of the core structure. Today, the exterior of the Workman House is restored to its Victorian-era appearance, while portions of the interior have been renovated for exhibit space. The Workmans had two children, Antonia Margarita and Jose Manuel. No known pictures of Jose survive. Antonia Margarita married Francis Pliny Fisk, or FPF Temple, which is where the Temple connection comes into our story. The couple had 11 children, eight of whom lived into adulthood. As a result of the Mexican-American War, which ended in 1848, part of the land ceded to the United States by Mexico became California. At the same time, the gold rush began. Like other ranchers, the workmen's and temples found a new market for fresh beef and became quite wealthy. Sadly, the decline of the gold rush and flood and drought in the 1860s brought ruin to many cattle ranchers. Some who also farmed, like the workmen's and temples, were able to survive. As Los Angeles began to grow from a small town to a bustling city, William Workman and his son-in-law, FPF Temple, ventured deeper into the business world. One of their most ambitious endeavors was opening a bank. But in 1875, and an economic panic erupted. Temple and Workman borrowed money from Elias Lucky Baldwin to try and save their bank, 
but the gamble failed. Having mortgaged most of their land holdings to Baldwin, Temple and workmen were financially ruined, and most of their land was lost. Although members of the Temple family bought back the workmen house and surrounding land, they struggled to stay afloat financially, and by the turn of the century, lost the house and the land. In 1914, Walter P. Temple, a grandson of the Workmans, was living in Montebello with his wife Laura and their four children. The Temple's nine-year-old son, Thomas, discovered oil on the family's land. This allowed the Temples to repurchase a portion of the Workman homestead. They remodeled the Workman house, adding modern conveniences such as electricity and indoor plumbing, and renovated El Campo Santo Cemetery adding a mausoleum in which family members and family friend Pio Pico, the last governor of Mexican California, are laid to rest. The temples soon commissioned well-known Los Angeles architects Walker and Eisen, and later Roy Selden Price, to design La Casa Nueva, or the new house. Built between 1922 and 1927, this 12,400 square foot Spanish colonial revival mansion is noted for its fine architectural crafts including stained glass, ceramic tile, wrought iron, and carved wood. While the Temples had five children, only four survived into adulthood. Their second child, Alvina, died as an infant. Thomas, Agnes, Walter Jr. and Edgar were often away at school during construction of the house, but letters they wrote to each other mentioned its progress. In a letter to her brother Thomas in December of 1928, Agnes wrote, I must tell you something about Thanksgiving. The living room, dining room, and breakfast room have been furnished, and if you could only see the old casa now. Everything looks beautiful, and much to my surprise, the room that made up the best is the dining room. It looks palatial. So please tell Dad when you write that you heard the house looks grand. He is so happy in it and is doing his best to please us. The building of La Casa Nueva was bittersweet for the Temple family as Laura, Walter's wife, suddenly died shortly after construction began. Along with his work at the homestead, Walter Temple was involved with walnut farming and real estate development in Los Angeles in the San Gabriel Valley. His biggest real estate project was the town of Temple, known today as Temple City, which he created in 1923 in honor of his family. As with his father and grandfather 50 years before, Walter Temple was beset by financial problems and by 1932 lost everything, including the homestead. After the Temples left, the property was used as a boys' military school and a convalescent hospital before the City of Industry acquired the homestead. Restoration took place throughout the 1970s and the Homestead Museum opened to the public in the spring of 1981. Today, the museum's collection and research library can be accessed both online and in-house. It includes everything from cookbooks in China to toys and tile samples. Each item in the collection offers a glimpse into the past. So I think whether people come here to take a tour or research, that they're looking at ways to make connections between how they live now and how people live in the past, or to think about how differently they live now from what went on in, in history. And as they do that, they're getting an understanding that it isn't just about coming to a place and seeing beautiful houses, but it's making connections between themselves and how people lived at an earlier place in time. Throughout the year, the museum offers a variety of programs ranging from public tours to school programs, workshops, and festivals such as Ticket to the Twenties. Public programs are among the best ways for us to bring history to life here at the Homestead Museum. You know, it's one thing to read a book or to watch a movie, but it's an entirely different experience to visit a historical site where you can really immerse yourself in a different era. And although the Workman and Temple families didn't get to stay here for as long as they would have liked, 
they have certainly left us with a unique way to look back on our history and to think about how we're connected to it, even today.